Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today it's going to be a game between Fire Sprite and Fantasy here on Fracture, the latter edition. Today on Friday it is Into the Void Week. Every other week is Into the Void Week. Just means that it's bronze, silver, and gold level replays sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Into the Void. Bottom right-hand corner, we have the Red Terran player, Fantasy. And in the top left-hand corner, the blue Zerg player, Fire Sprite, with a Y, which is like Celtic or Dungeons and Dragons in some way there. I like it. Fantasy throws up the I love you. Look at him. He's trying to prop up his opponent and make him feel better about things. That's fantastic. What a nice fellow Fantasy is here. Meanwhile, Zerg player just going for a hatch first play. Nothing too crazy. It is on Fracture, as I mentioned previously. It's a great map. I just, I have an unreasonable love for snow maps. I don't know what it is. I just have, I like the tile set. I like the aesthetics of it. And it just makes me like the map a lot more than I otherwise should. So if you hate snow maps, you're like, Falcon, you're dumb. Well, yes, I understand. But my opinion is not based on any logic. It's just what I like. And really, as a society, if we did a better job... Have we played before this fire sprite? Why do you love me? If we did a better job recognizing that opinions are okay, that we can have opinions about stuff like this... Like, okay, if I have an opinion that we should be able to hit people in the face with hammers and get away with it. No, that's not okay. But in an opinion where nobody gets hurt, I just like this map set better than another, or this uh, tile set better than another tile set. It's cool. Like, there's no reason to get mad about that. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things in the world that are that way. Do I think this quarterback's better than that quarterback? Okay, you can feel that way. It's fine. It's no reason to get upset. Uh, is this player better than this player in StarCraft 2? Sure, you can have opinions on that as well. And you can recognize that, sure, they're not ranked as high, as the player, you know, who is ranked higher than them, but you just like them and you should be able to get away with that. That shouldn't make anybody upset. All right, back to the StarCraft. We do have an SCV coming up into the main base, sees the timing on the pool, says, all right, no quick lings coming my way. Thank goodness for that. Also, no Reaper from Fantasy. He's just going right into Factory. He's like, you know what? My Reaper control isn't really that great, so I'm just going to skip it entirely and go for stuff I can do work with, like tanks maybe, Hellions maybe he feels more comfortable with. Anyway, Zerg player here is sitting on 400 minerals. This is the time you really want to go for a third base. Uh, if you're sitting, if you did this right, like a hatch first extractor pool thing, you will have enough money to expand, depending on whether or not your opponent actually expanded too. If it's a one base attack, you might want to not want to go for the third base quite as soon as this, but right now, definitely Fire Sprite wants to. Oh, it is a Reaper. Spent all that time talking about how Fantasy didn't want to go for a Reaper, then he went for a Reaper. All right, Slade Wilson, after being defeated... By the arrow, he was exiled from Earth in a cry cryo-freeze drop pod. He drifted in space into the Kapurlu sector, where the Terran Dominion brought him back and gave him a Reaper suit to reign terror over the galaxy. What up, Slade Wilson? I don't watch Arrow. All I know about Arrow is that it was so bad one of the seasons recently that they changed the topic of what they talked about on the subreddit for Arrow to talk about something else instead. I can't remember what it was. A different show, though. A better show. Anyway, Slade Wilson coming right on in. Gonna go actually straight up just die. As Into the Void Reapers often do, is just straight up die. Get some shots off on the Queen. Get a couple shots off there on the drone, too. And just bad times. Yeah, notice how Fire Sprite is sitting at 700 resources. 700. He's getting a spine, at least. He's getting some speed, which seems a little bit late. But again, this is why we're into the void. This is where we can learn about stuff. The third base lesson here for Zerg players. Get a third base. Especially if you have scouted your opponent has an expansion at this stage of the game. Whether they're Terran or whether they're Protoss, you can go for a third base very safely. Good job taking down that SCV. Marine production on the way. Medivac on the way here too. And a tank from Fantasy. So it's not exactly incredibly well played here. He really should be continuing to make SCVs at his main base. He re This tank can handle... Absolutely handle those lings. Let's go. Let's go save the base. There we go. It's amazing that lings can take three shots from a tank without dying when it's in just regular type mode. It's kind of incredible. That bonus damage versus armored really comes into play. Evolution Chamber and a Roach Warren. It's almost like Fire Sprite is playing a ZVZ right now. He's walling off his front. He's sitting on two bases. He's going for a Roach Warren. He has one gas. He's getting a lair. He knows this is Terran, right? This build is not super viable versus Terran. However, we'll see what Fantasy is capable of doing for us here. Tanks still on the way. Again, worker count at 19 at the 5-minute mark is pretty anemic for Terran. Really should be closer to 30, 35 at this stage. If you continue making SCVs when you stop making SCVs, you'd be in a better position. But, I mean, that's why we're here. We're here to learn. Yep. 
At least it's throwing down mules. That's really nice. I am so confused about what Fire Sprite is doing here. If he's trying to go for some crazy, like... If he's going for that Rochonitis all-in, it might actually work for him. Based on where he tries to Nidus here. But, boy, howdy. Sitting on... Getting one, plus one missile and plus one melee. Not saturating his natural extractor here. Getting a second extractor in his main that he's also not saturating. And he's going for Burrow. Fire Sprite is kind of just doing whatever he wants. And really, that's what we're here for, Into the Void. It's just the craziness, the insane decisions to do stuff. I mean, not insane, just sometimes the uneducated decisions to do stuff. Like, Fire Sprite doesn't know he should have a third base. Although, one of the lessons, one of the things you have to remember about StarCraft is spend your money. Spend it a lot. Look at this. 2,000 resources, 2,000 minerals in the bank for Fire Sprite at the five-minute mark. And that's entirely because he doesn't have the hatchery count to spend all of the money that he's getting. His worker count's real healthy. 40 at the five minute mark is not bad for Into the Void by any stretch. It's pretty good, actually, but he doesn't have the larva to spend it all. Okay, now he has a whole ton of larva. Now he is making some overlords to avoid getting further supply blocked. He has supply blocked at this point. Look, Terran player got a third base before he did. Three bases for the Terran versus two bases for a fire sprite. <sighs> Alright, production tab for Fantasy is pretty empty right now. He's getting SCVs, which is nice, but he's got a couple barracks doing literally nothing. Factory and a starport doing nothing as well. Deciding to kind of scout around with Marines and see if it, maybe proxy hatches are happening or whatnot. But Fire Sprite, here's the thing. Uh, walls are good in ZVZ, but walls in against Terran and Protoss are bad because Immortals and Colossus and tanks exist. They are siege-breaking units. Tanks set up right here. Your roaches and your lings die, your wall dies, and you lose the game. That's exactly the problem of falling off against Terran. Any great Terran worth his salt is going to show up with ranged units of some kind. Marine Marauder could break this too. You don't even need tanks to deal with this wall. It's just walls are good against melee stuff. If somebody's bringing a lot of zealots your way or a lot of zerglings your way, great. Wall off. But this is not a possibility from Terran at all. It might actually help against Hellions, I guess. Is he worried about Hellions showing up? Well, we're seven minutes in, so you shouldn't be anymore but yeah i mean this <laughs> this is why we do the into the void is this is so unorthodox it really is fantasy leaving the zerg player almost entirely alone for the first seven minutes of the game fire sprite should be close to maxed out at this stage maxed out whatever tech he needs to kill fantasy here mass muta would actually do pretty well honestly marine count isn't super high at this stage there are nine of them out there and then the tanks are useless and then you just win and you move on to the next game but this is into the void these players are not that level they're not going to kill each other that way third base finally on the way for fire sprite at the seven minute mark a marine scouts it immediately good job marine Ooh, and double expanding his fire sprite perhaps recognizing he has a whole lot of minerals he is saturating his extractors which i'm a huge fan of here uh, meanwhile the terran player he really just needs to keep making stuff he's got buildings that are being left completely empty as far as production goes, and you always want to be producing stuff. You always do. Ling slipping and skiding and jumping over the ice, killing that marine. The entire army shows up to deal with this. Roaches. Okay. Roaches against Terran are pretty bad. If you have roaches in conjunction with hydras, or if you make them into ravagers, they're better. But just pure roach, especially against an opponent who has a lot of tanks, is going to do pretty poorly. Unless you just have so many roaches, it doesn't matter how many tanks there are, which is entirely possible. If you're playing at a higher level, right? If we have somebody along the lines of, oh, I don't know, Maru, showing up, uh, your Roach is not going to do very well. If you have somebody on the other end like Rogue, he could max out on Roaches and just win right now. I just don't see it really working out for Fire Sprite. There's the problem. He has some Hydras, which is good. I like that a lot, but Planetary Fortress tank set up at this third base is real, real dangerous for this Roach Hydra play. I don't, I don't. Okay, he smartly doesn't A move into it and lose everything. Oh, he burrows everybody. So the roaches... Where are you, roach? Yep, regenerating health very, very nicely. When it's burrowed, I do like to see that. Now, this is the point where you need to make a billion 22 drones. Make 22 drones, fully saturate the third and the fourth bases. Get that economy up, and then you're on four base, and you could do anything you want. As Zerg, if you're on four base, you want to go Mass Infester, great. You want to go Broodlord, great. <laughs> you want to play around with Ling Bane Ling, okay. You want to get Mutas and Corruptors, go for it. You can afford everything on four bases, Zerg. But unfortunately, if you only have 41 workers on four bases and most of your hatcheries are sitting empty, you're not going to have a good time. He is making an Infester, which, and into the void? Infester is incredibly 
incredibly ambitious. I have not seen a Zerg player make an Infester and Into the Void, I think possibly ever in my casting career. So third base, getting walled off here with Supply Depots. I like it, gives Lings less surface area to attack this tank anyway. That's the Punitary Fortress is a beautiful answer to anything that we would see otherwise. And yeah, here we go. This is the production tab you want from a Terran player. You got SCVs, Vikings, tanks, Marines, Marauders, and upgrades all across the board. That is beautiful from Fantasy right now. I am a fan of that one. Fire Sprite, getting Pathogen Glands, and additional Infestors. Dude, if this Zerg player knows how to use Infestors, I'm going to eat my shorts. I just... It takes a lot of great... Like, a lot of pro players don't like using Infestors right now. They just don't feel like they're worth it, but... Wow. All right, Fire Sprite. I, my estimation of you is going to go up a whole lot if you can use this thing well and not just lose it, which seems moderately possible. It might happen. I actually never noticed that Infestors have these little wiggly things at the front. Or are they like sensing like antenna? Probably antenna. Bloop, bloop, bloop. They pulse. They are big targets too. I've made this rant before, but the fact that the Spellcasters... For Terran and Protoss are so small. High Templar and Ghosts are tiny and hard to target fire. And Infestors are huge! If you want to kill a, a Infestor with feedback or storm or just tank fire, it, it's so hard to misclick. Is the thing. What on earth? You're bringing a queen over two fire sprite? Ah, here we go! Burl Roach trying to get in here, but there's detection. So immediate evacuation. That was not as uh, not as great as, as he wanted it to be, as Fire Sprite wanted it to be there at all. Holy smoke, Swarm Host. All right, this is interesting, actually. This is pretty interesting. Swarm Host Assault is not bad. Marauders do not overextend, and they do not. I don't know why you need the Infestors. Infestors and Swarm Host don't really go well together. But Fire Sprite is at 58 workers now. His gas income is not as hot as mineral income, but that's okay. He'll figure that out here eventually. Creep Spread could also be improved. Terran Player, I just feel like is a little bit anemic right now. He's got 109 supply. He has supply block, about 7 tanks, 6 marauders, and 12 marines. Doesn't seem like quite enough to handle what Fire Sprite is rolling with right now. So he's going to come in in conjunction with the Locusts. And I just don't think it's going to work, is the problem here. A repair on the Planetary Fortress would be amazing. There it is. There's the repair, but I think the base is going to die anyway. Hydra DPS is kind of insane, and it does go down. All right, so he does manage to uh, take down the base here. Fantasy loses his third. It was a little bit of a clumsy attack, but it wasn't bad. And Fessiterran tossed out for reasons that are, I mean, as extra DPS would be the reasons there. Single Marine running around down this left side, and there is no sign of Terran at the third base anymore. All right, so the problem is Fantasy is now sitting on two bases at the 12-minute mark. It is a bad place to live is on two bases at the 12-minute mark, especially against a four-basing Zerg player Fire Sprite. Right? Right. It's just, it is a terrifying proposition. You tell any Zer any Terran player that they are down two bases to the Zerg and they're going to feel bad about it. Replacing a third base to the south here, which is not being scouted by Fire Sprite, but he is heading down this way as though he wants to attack it anyway. I like, I kind of like the constant marine checks. Is he patrolling? He is, well, he was patrolling. He was patrolling. His body gets thrown into these ice shards that are covering a cave of some kind, it looks like. Maybe Ursodons live in there. And good cancel, actually. Fantasy cancels it, recognizing, okay, there's a huge army coming to kill me. And I'm not ready for it. Okay, seriously, Mass Swarm Host would just win. Neural Parasite, Fire Sprite. Are you going to Neural Parasite in my Into the Void? Oh, maybe. Maybe you are. Goodness gracious. All right, well, um, if you're watching this, then uh, you should also watch the Falcon Paladin Hour Global Open. It's going to be this Sunday, the first inaugural event at 6 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash xjustxjordanx. You can come watch players play. Some of them, not, not this low, not this low level, but some of them are, you know, Masters level, GM level. And then we have players like Solar that show up and do pretty well. Braddock as well. Kalizers showed up from time to time. But it's me casting live StarCraft with a co-caster, Just Jordan, as you might have been able to tell from the Twitch uh, the Twitch thing. So anyway, put it on your calendar. Put it on your calendar. Come watch. Come say hello. Stop by. Throw some bits at us. You could throw pennies our way and we'll be exceptionally grateful. Fifth base on the way for Fire Sprite. Down left here. And Fantasy sitting on 2,700, 2,200 on his resources count. His tank count is fairly healthy. 
Yeah, I don't know that hiders are what you want in this situation, dude. See, Spire, Ultraless Cavern, Fire Sprite is finding the joys of being on four bases and getting as much gas as you want. Five bases is even better. It really is. 12 Zerglings on the way, plus two melee attack being researched. Upgrades on the tanks are plus one, which is great. Marines at plus two, plus one, working on that plus two armor upgrade too. And Fantasy, he needs a third, so what do you do? You, you try to get a third. So this guy can get a third too. There's nobody harassing this location actually, but he's not. He doesn't know that. He's blind. He's blind to everything that's happening over here. That's what I meant to do. This one. This camera. He doesn't know about... Well, he knows about the four bases, but not the fifth base at all. APM check. 53 for Fantasy. 79 for Fire Sprite. I believe this classifies as an Into the Void for sure. All right. Pro tip. If you have a big, scary Zuri army like this, move out. Sitting with it does you no good at all. All right. Uh... And kill the command center? Probably. That actually... Well, some of the SCVs here too gonna die. Tank fire on the locusts and tank dead. Alright, is he coming in? He's coming in! These burrow infestors! What? Are they gonna neural, par neural parasite in the tanks would be so beautiful. Is he gonna do it? Where did they go? They're running away. There's a neural parasite on a tank! How interesting is that? Oh my gosh, hitting other tanks, hitting Hellbats, Neuroparasiting a Medivac. Oh, anti-armor missile toss down. Neuroparasite. Oh, that wore off quite nicely. Too many tanks remaining. Too many tanks happening there. Fire Sprite backs the heck on off there, but he actually used Neuroparasite on a tank. A Neuroparasite on a Medivac there, and then an anti-armor missile came down and I think hit mostly Terran units. He didn't Neuroparasite a Raven, did he? Hang on, hang on. Where the heck is even the Raven? Oh, right here. Okay, so let's watch it. Oh, he... No, he didn't. He wanted to. Oh, the Viking is shooting it away, and then it throws down the... <laughs> he throws it down on the enemy units because they're neural parasited. That was crazy. That was really, really fun. All right. Well, third base toast for fantasy, which is bad news. But the good news is that the Zerg army, which is really weird, weirdly composited, is going back home. All right, Fire Sprite. We're almost at Oprah money here. Ooh, we were until six Ultras showed up. All right, six Ultras with plus three Ground Carapace. Going to be a little bit hard to deal with for fantasy. He does have tanks. He's got five of them. But man, if you show up with a bunch of, like, Ling Ultra, Bane Ling, I think you just win at this point. I know there's a Liberator, but not sure how much that actually matters. Expanding up here is Fantasy. He keeps making me think he's expanding up here, but really, he's just uh, long-distance mining from that third. I guess those SCVs have probably been long-distance mining since the Planetary Fortress died, huh? Probably. Kitness plating on the way from Fire Sprite. I like what he's doing. Fantasy getting plus three attack for his bio and armor. Actually, plus three attack for vehicle weapons. I bet his bio already has plus three attack, and they do. So working on three three for the bio, working on plus three attack for the uh, the mech stuff here, which is pretty fantastic. Actually, I am a fan. All right, here is a giant, scary Zerg army. One seventy four to one hundred nine supply. It is time to go. It is time to push. It is time to do stuff with this army. Sitting back here in a defensive position against a Terran player like this is begging them to please get up a huge army. Please get scary upgrades you're going to have a hard time dealing with and come to kill you. Zerg needs to be aggressive. They need to be attacking expansions. Unless the Terran player is being uh, aggressive, in which case you have to defend your expansions. Anyway. Anyway. More swarm host. More infestors. I mean, fungal, probably a better use against this clumped up army, if we're going to be honest. But uh, Neural Parasite is a heck of a lot more entertaining. 100% more entertaining for sure. Fantasy getting more Ravens, getting Vikings, getting Siege Tanks, getting high sec auto tracking for his planetary fortresses, and he really could retake his third if he wanted. I mean, I know he has a third base down here and all, but. But. Yeah, but. Is he creep spreading? Ah, I thought these were creep tumors for a minute. They're the same square size as a creep tumor. Look at this. Creep tumor down here, same square size. Ultralisk. <laughs> That's really funny. I guess drones have a smaller square size than anything else, but everything else is the same. Maybe Zerglings might have a smaller square size too on the minimap. I'm just realizing these things. 
Marine comes down, says, aha, there is a sixth base down here. After all, I will try to kill it with a single Marine, a fully upgraded Marine, mind you, but this queen is plus three, plus three. So no, that's not gonna happen. Dude, the upgrades for Fire Sprite have been really good. Really good, actually. All right, so yeah, remember when I said it was safe to retake your third base fantasy? I might have lied to you. I might have lied just a tiny, tiny bit. See that tank fire? That tank fire. Oh, there's a raven. Okay, so the infestors are all getting squished. The swarm hosts are doing nothing. He's bringing the ultras in, but the tank fire is really strong against them right now. Some locusts go down. Anti-armor missile on an ultra list. He ends up dead. One ultra gets into the mineral line in the natural base, which is kind of hilarious. Queen down to tank fire, too. Or perhaps liberator circles. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, the ultra decides to go home. Man, it's still 133 to 98 supply somehow. Fantasy managed to plant his third base up here anyway. Replant his third base up there anyway. We'll call it the fourth, and this down here is the third. But Fire Sprite says, Ow, that hurt. That's because you tried to be cute. You tried to be cute with infestors, and you brought a queen all the way over there, and just make attacking units. At this level, honestly, to win, make a ton of Zerglings and Bailings and Ultras and just go do it. Bring some Hydras, too, to deal with the anti-air, sure. Sure, sure. But the fact that you had so much supply taken up in Infestors that did, I think, literally nothing. They might have gotten off one Neural, but it didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Did you just transfer your drones? Oh, he did just transfer his drones. Way up here to way oversaturate his fourth base. Way oversaturated. See, these bases that could still use drones and also expanding is good. He is expanding. All right, good. So Fantasy on four bases has 53 Harvesters compared to the 61 of Fire Sprite, who happens to be on, jeez, is he on seven bases now? Seven base up north here. That's pretty good. That is pretty fantastic. Idle drones up here at his main base on the extractors that he could do stuff with. I look. All right. Fantasy's done an okay job scouting today. He has. He's at least aware of where Fire Sprite's bases are. Even if he is sending Marines to their deaths, which he is. Fantasy landing a fifth base. Holy smokes. Oh, this little command is dead, though. Lift it. Lift it. Thank you. Good lift. But the Hydras. The plus three Hydras, man. Pretty scary. Pretty actually terrifying. Hydra DPS is nuts, guys. If they want to nerf Hydra in future, exp or future patches, what they've talked about doing, don't nerf their health. Nerf their attack. They just hit so, so hard. And I'd be fine with knocking it down a little bit, right? Wouldn't we all? Wouldn't we all a little bit here? That said, marine attack is pretty great, but they're just... They're, they're smaller? I don't know. Marines are amazing. Nine mutas on the way from Fire Sprite. Getting building armor. Getting ship weapons level three. Is that... What the... What ship and vehicle three is fantasy? He's going to have fully upgraded bio and mech in this game, which is really weird. Really weird thing to see. And again, this Ling Hydra Swarm Hulse Ultra Infester thing is just... It's not a composition you're ever going to see, is the idea. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Three, four, five. Actually, is that six? One, two, three, four, five... It is six. Counting is hard, you guys. That is one of my weaknesses as a caster, is counting how many bases are out there. That's, uh... I don't know. I'm working on it. Hey, Battle Cruiser Operational here from Fantasy. He's going for Battle Cruisers. He's getting weapon refit. And I guess the armor upgrade will help pretty immensely with that. Now, do we have an answer to this? I guess technically we do have Neural Parasite, which is kind of an answer to Battle Cruiser if you can do it well enough. Okay, but if you want to have enough Swarm Host to actually kill a planetary, you need more than like five. Twelve is a good number, I think. Look at the mutas hanging. They know. They know about the sensor tower right here. Let's see if they can see it. Uh, on the mini-map, anyway. So mutas making a dive bomb right for the natural base, where there is a missile turret, but that's it. And it's gonna die. There's no saving it. Wow, that missile turret killed a muta very, very fast. Yeah, missile turrets are, are, are beefy in StarCraft 2 compared to Brood War, which I've been doing quite a bit of recently on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Paladin. Which, come say hi. Come say hello to the Twitch side of things. Uh, natural Orbital Command is going to die. Reaction time, not great. From Fantasy. And also, this fifth base I was so happy with. 
is now going to die. Muta's after SCVs. He's like, oh, hang on. I went to the bathroom. Well, let me kill these Mutas real fast. No, let me kill this real fast. I'm so confused. And oh, there's the Neural Parasite on one of the tanks. Killing it anyway. This tank as well. Getting Neural Parasited, but there's just not enough of anything else. Look at all that damage pouring out of the Terran army. Zerg army toast, man. Suddenly it's 147 to 103 supply. Resources lost 20,000 for Fire Sprite compared to 16,000 for Fantasy. Muta's still trying to do stuff in the natural, but not really getting a lot done. As one Mutalisk attacking a refinery is bad. It's gonna, it takes a long time to kill it, is the idea. Alright, so Army's up for Fantasy Man. He has a weird composition too. Viking Marine Tank, Hellbat Marauder, Battlecruiser Raven. Oh, small attack down here at the 5th base. Oh, it's distracting, though. And a Hellbat in here in the 4th base. This is not looking good at all for Fire Sprite. He's making 24 links, 14 Hydras. Okay, 40, 54 links it, uh, and 3 Ultralisks. He might be able to handle this. Okay, the links pop out and do end up almost saving the hatch, but nope. Can't save it. 5th base up here, dead 2. Down to 6th base. It's down to 4 bases. Drone's getting massacred here. It's 32 to 32 harvesters. Replant this base, Fantasy. While you're attacking, you have to replant a base because now the, the, the Zerg army is afraid of you. This is a better composition from Fantasy. I like it. The Ultras need to be in the front, though, instead of in the back as their pathing is stupid. There we go. Ultras flanking a little bit. Yamato cannon on one of the Ultras. And Zerglings come in and absorb shots, too. I like in this. There we go. Zerg player clears it up. Battlecruiser not actually being dealt with somehow. Really hard to kill with six armor, guys. Six armor is a lot of armor to have in StarCraft, and Battlecruisers went fully upgraded. They got it. Killing Zerglings, padding his stats here. 11 kills already. Proposed balance change. Battlecruiser is able to attack and move at the same time. Vikings just flying into the main base, and they're like, you know what? We could maybe land and get some stuff done. Counterattack! Desperation counterattack not going well! At all for the Zerg player here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ultras taking Liberator shots, Marine Marauder shots, and Tank shots all at the same time. Good hold. Good hold by Fantasy. Vikings killing Overlords, trying to supply block Free Sprite. Not actually, or Fire Sprite. Not actually doing all that much, if we're honest with ourselves. Battlecruiser, keep moving, man. Keep Keep moving. There's the land. Maybe he wants to kill the spire. I think maybe he does. Well, that queen's definitely first target. Uh, you guys do have plus one attack upgrades, which is pretty good. So one spire down, two spires down. Hydra's trying to show up and do things at the turn side of the base. Nope. For the map. Nope. Absolutely not. Oh, but these zerglings are a problem. Because these zerglings are fully upgraded zerglings. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't have adrenal glands? Hold up. He didn't get adrenal glands for all of his links. Mutalisks somehow doing stuff at, at, the, at this fourth base location. Gone. Third base replanted by Fantasy. He's scrapping and clawing his way back to having an economy. At 32 workers compared to 9 drones, though, he's going to be okay. I think he's going to be just fine economically for a little bit. At the very least. Fires Bright can rebuild all of his hatcheries. He has 11,000 minerals. In the bank. 11,000. Oh, the poor drone tasked with replanting this base up north at the 5th is a sad drone. Let's follow him. His name is Billy. Billy the drone was harvesting minerals, and as he was about to return the minerals, he was told, go make a building by Zagara or whoever. He was like, I just wanted to return the minerals, but okay. I'll, I'll go this... Ah! And Billy was no more. Another attack on in. Corruptor Hydra, I guess? Do the hiders actually have to help, though? Well, not if there's tank fire, however. <laughs> Tiny hold. Tiny hold there from Fantasy, but a hold nevertheless. Don't. Are you going to send another drone out to die to this battle cruiser? He doesn't even know, I bet. I bet Fire Sprite doesn't know. What the heck are you doing over here, Queen? With all your many limbs. You can't spread creep here. You can't inject here. You can't attack here. There's nothing for you to do here. But I respect the journey you made. I suppose Fantasy, on the other hand, has a harder time retaking his bases. Because he only has 200 minerals in the bank. Which is real, real bad. Oh, these drones are going to come die too. What happened to Billy? Say his friends, Ron, 
Todd and Joe. Ah! Oh, one of them managed to turn himself into a hatchery and be saved and spared from the wrath temporarily of the battle cruiser. But battle cruiser DPS is faster than hatchery production, especially with plus one attack. And Todd died as a hatchery. It's gotta be a weird experience for a drone, right? Do you lose? Do you actually have any consciousness in the first place? Free Sprite wants to go for Infestors. He feels like that's his key to victory right now, is Infestor. He has five queens, period. And uh, 10,000 minerals. Dude, if you just made a billion cracklings, I think that might be it. If he just maxed out on crackling, but he's not. He's not doing it. He's trying to go for a spire again. Meanwhile, these plus three marines don't even bother stimming to take down this hatchery. That is how wide open this shot is. Broodlings? Actually pretty good if they have upgrades. 3-3 three, three broodlings are scary, man. They hit fast, and they hit hard, and they're hard to kill. Okay, so base down. Um, hmm. Fire Sprite has effectively two mining bases. Waiting for that Spire to finish, but I don't think he can wait. Ooh, Neural Parasite, the medevac? Do you get all the units inside, too? Someone's done this. Someone's done this before. I just don't recall who it was. Hmm. Repairing our hero battle cruiser with 15 kills. He is a captain for the Terran Dominion. Marines are cool, aren't they? They're cool. Combat shield is such a weird concept. I understand they wanted to give an upgrade to buff the Marines, but they could have just been like, and now their armor's thicker instead of giving them a literal shield to hold, right? Oh boy, more drones. Coming to investigate the deaths of their friends. Seven mutas on the way from Fire Sprite. He really just has, he's got 20 larva. He just, yeah, no. Fungal would help. Tactical, no, 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 no. Neural Parasite the Battle Cruiser. Do that. Yeah, you just run away from the Infested Terrans. They're slow. Yo, oh, oh, Yuda's in trouble. Oh, they came back to die. Oh, Neural Parasite on the Battle Cruiser would have been so cool. Did it? Wait, wait, wait. Did it just die? So he tactical jumps. He's taking massive fire from these dudes because they hit hard. 17 damage per shot is a lot of shot. Oh, he does. Wow. Infested Terrans taking down the BC, but the Marines are unkillable. Don't fly, don't fly over the, wait, this guy didn't get a boost c command. Now he did. Oh, oops, poor crawler finishes him off. Another medevac dies. All right, well, get out of the range of anti-air stuff, dudes. All right, enough Marines on the ground inside the main base. The fire sprite is in trouble. He's making 12 wings and two mutas, but really. All right. We just had 100 Zerglings. This would be a different thing. Replacement Spire gonna die. This is the third, yep, third Spire to die in this game. Broodlings, good job. Zerglings popping out at a pretty opportune time. Muta's just flying over to their des. Yeah, man, you need more lings than that if you're gonna kill fully upgraded Marines with Stim and Medivac support. Infested Terrans getting tossed out. I'm not sure why Fire Sprite thinks that Infested Terrans are good. I mean, I guess it does finish off a Medivac there. So that's pretty great, but the Marines are the more immediate threat. I would assume. <laughs> Pops up another Infested Terran. There's the scan. Ooh, he just, he just gets another medevac with Infested Terrans. Ultralisk Cavern down. Broodling's trying to get some stuff done. Nope, more Infested Terrans getting tossed down. I mean... <laughs> Toss him down over here. Kill those medevacs. It'd be awesome. Meanwhile, not much going on for other player. I guess Fantasy is making some Marines and Tanks back home, but he's really, really focused on killing this hive. There are the broodlings. There are all sorts of dead. More intensive Terrans coming down, and... Blarp. Put out of their misery by their marine friends. Their former marine friends. Okay, well, Fire Sprite's making a Hydralisk. He has 21 gas in the make. He's lost... 13,000 gas in this game. 45,000 resources total compared to 24 for fantasy. These Hydras actually are a little bit scary. 
Yeah, man. Fully upgraded Hydra in a one-to-one -one scenario versus Marine is going to be okay. Going to be just fine, actually. So main base is dead. This infestation pit is bleeding quickly and will end up dead. Production tab empty for both of these players, but really that's what uh, Into the Void is all about. Another army here from Fantasy. That's what matters. He got another good army. Marines, tanks, medevacs, Vikings. Good. All sorts of good stuff here. But uh, seriously, if he made Zerglings with all of this money that he has, he would surround this and kill it. Especially if they weren't super bunched up. If they were this bunched up, it'd be harder. But if they're walking in a line, it's much easier to get them. Long distance uh, gas harvesting from down this way. And fantasy, just trying to make it happen. Making it happen, Cap'n. Yep, here comes the Terran Dominion. Oh, shoot. Zergling's got into Fantasy's replacement third base. Sheesh. And that's it. Fire Sprite leaves the game. He was in the process of wiping that out, but this was an army he couldn't kill. He knew. He knew. And he tapped out, and that's it. You know what would be really good against this is Fungal. Fungal Hydra Ling actually might work in this situation. What's better is Bane Ling, especially at this low level, but Fungal Hydra Ling, not a bad answer either. All right, that was a good addition of Into the Void. That was a lot of fun. 12 Ultras died. What? 12 Ultras, 9 Swarm Hosts, 234 Lings, uh, 56 Hydralisks, all sorts of billion, billion things here. And yeah, so good job by Fantasy. I mean, he never really got an economy up that he was happy with, but... In the end, it was enough. It was enough. Fire Sprite tried some weird stuff. Fantasy went a little bit more traditional and got the win. All right. That is going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void Into the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.
Searching into the 